Okay, one thing I know for a fact is that you can have a drink of sus. Because this is all basically what's what's on the Google Forms. So if people don't type them in to the Google Forms, then we can't have them as a drink. But, as we all know and love the internet, of course there's a sus drink. Hey, here we go. Finally. Give me that sussy drink. Alright. Bottoms up. <laughs> I feel sus. My stomach is aching. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I feel like something bad's about to happen from the sus drink we just drank. Oh. Yeah, no, look at this. The symptoms are kicking in. I can't make it. Three, five, help me out. Please. Let's go, let's go say it six. Put me out of my misery on night six. I'm gonna die of a hideous disease unless you turn my face apart. End me. Please. Hello everyone and welcome back to the SCP Lab Rat series. You may think we're not here, I am here, don't worry, my bar is here. The trouble is, from the last episode we spawned in this room, and you know, the, like, like the torch died, right? So when I came back in, we've got no other alternative to torches, and the torch is teeny tiny, so there's absolutely no way that I'm going to be able to find it on the floor. <laughs> I've spent a good few minutes trying to maybe like unlock that door that you might just be able to see over there. But I figured, like, we'll just carry on, we'll move on, and hopefully everything will become bright again. So, oh boy howdy, do we have a lot to cover in this episode. I'm gonna, basically, uh, there's been a ton of, of different patches that have happened in the last couple of weeks, but the main one that's kind of gone on here is the fact that there are now the Gate A endings. There are five endings in total for this game, but the Gate A endings consist of two out of five of those. So, we're gonna get one of those endings already just by opening this door and, and escaping. But then we'll, we'll go back, we'll do a bit of a victory lap. I'm going to cover basically everything that we've we've talked about that, that I maybe didn't do in the first episode or the first time around this game. And and then we'll get back to the end and cover the second ending once we, we kind of make our way around. Capiche? Capiche. Let's get ending number one. Take me home, country roads, to the place where I belong. West Virginia. Miles from Miles. Although we don't actually know where this is, so it might not be, it's probably not going to be West Virginia, if anything. Ah, oh, we have lights. I can see again. And presumably, we might even see the outside. <gasps> there it is! Do you see a guard up there in the top? What are you doing up there? Okay. Oh dear lord. That's, 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 that's bad. Uh, I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> Can't catch me! Uh, you might be able to catch me. Please let me go. Don't do it. Ooh, look at this. It's a fancy lighting system. Oh, it's like a mannequin trying to grab us. Don't like that. So there you go. That was the ending that I was hoping for. And those two features there, that was Besbro the developer and then his little friend. I think he's called Yertle? Could be wrong. Might be wrong. But if I'm not, there you go. That, there's the two devs that have made this entire game. So let's go. Let's go to our victory lap. And here we are, back in the facility. It's been, it's been a while since we started here in the cell, but, but we're back. Feels good to be back. Good to be going again around the facility. Victory lap. We'll make this happen. So. I actually, I made a couple of, a couple, one, one or two, teeny, eeny, maybe massive mistakes when, when conveying the information about the SCP Foundation that I just kind of want to go around and, and kind of cover just to make sure that everyone's caught up. I will give a quick disclaimer, like on this entire series that I definitely should have made from the start, which is basically just like, I am not like the end all be all knowledge of the SCP Foundation. Like my role in all of this is really just like a passing fan. Just someone that's got like a general interest in the SCP Foundation, but I, I don't necessarily like represent any sort of representative of the of the Foundation. I'm, I'm literally just a guy that, that's kind of interested in all of this. There you go. That's covering that. So, so if you want to know anything to an accurate level of detail, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, then you're gonna want to go and read up on the SCP Foundation wiki, which is in the description. 
This is going to be fun getting past this. That's straight away. Maybe we'll try one of the, the other ways. That sounds like a good idea. Let's try that. Oh, God. He's going to be over here as well. It's a nightmare. Hey, it's the bell. Oh, so one of the, like everyone freaked out when I picked up the bell and I, <laughs> I didn't really understand why. So we'll, we'll put on hold the, the mistakes real quick and I'll, I'll read this because I kind of want to know. SCP-513 is to be suspended in a one cubic meter block of gelatin and contained within a soundproof, climate-controlled cell. The gelatin must be inspected daily for any de degradation or loss of integrity. Personnel performing the inspection are to wear earplugs and active noise-cancelling earmuffs at all times while inside 513's cell. Any sentient being exposed to 513 are monitored by at least two security personnel at all times. Physically, SCP-513 is an unremarkable, rusty cowbell. No marks or engravings are, invi are visible on its surface due to large amounts of corrosion. Yeah, that, that's an accurate description. I thought it was fairly unremarkable myself. Any noise produced by 513 immediately induces strong anxiety in all sentient beings who hear it. Exposure victims report feelings of being watched by an unseen entity and present elevated heart rates and blood pressure. Roughly one hour after exposure, exposure victims began to catch glimpses of SCP-513 Instance 1 when opening doors, walking past mirrors, turning their heads, or performing any other actions that result in a sudden change in visual perception. Upon being sighted, 513 Instance 1 reportedly turns away and runs out of view before disappearing without a trace. This is creepy. Descriptions of 513 Instance 1's appearance are largely unreliable. Test subjects are unable to provide complete accounts of sightings due to their exhaustion, degraded mental health, and disruptive hypervigilance. However, all interrogations thus far indicate that 513 Instance 1 is a tall, emaciated humanoid with abnormally large hands. Oh! So, when you ring the bell, you basically get stalked by a creature for eternity and you now have extreme anxiety that's good to know dropping in <laughs> dropping in nice okay so when i rang the bell and everyone was like what have you done i understand now you all thought i was gonna get haunted and, and snuck up by instance one but luckily i don't i don't know if he's even in this game if we find the bell again you know what i'm gonna do i'm curious Everything's for science. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. All right, providing there's no 173 in this godforsaken room, we could, oh, god damn it. Okay, let me, let me get my bearings right. Okay, blink meter, ready. I don't even know what the blink button is anymore. It's definitely something I should work out. Oh, hello, how you doing? Let me just, coming past, pushing the button. It's on my left somewhere, there it is. Good, gonna blink, gonna blink, gonna die. <laughs> get out the room, shut the door. Capiche. Good. Yes, so one of the mistakes I made immediately, or maybe not mistake, but one of the things I didn't really tell you is that SCP is actually a dual acronym. So as well as standing for the Foundation's kind of motto and way of life, the secure, contain, protect, it also stands for the the name given to SCPs. And so SCP, when you, when you say like SCP-173, doesn't mean secure, protect, Secure Contain Protect 173, it actually means Special Containment Procedures. So every SCP is basically just named based on how they are contained, essentially. So Special Containment Procedures 173 just documents how you contain the entity known as one, or, or like numbered as 173. Oh, good. That's cleared that one. Uh, the other thing was that I, I mentioned the three like main classes of containment, which is Safe, Euclid, and Keta, but I didn't actually say Keta. I just said Euclid Euclid. <laughs> so so there you go. The third one is Keta or Keta as a lot of people in America like to call it. But here in Britain we like to destroy language and everything in it. So it's Keta. Wait, is one 106 is coming? We're stuck in the lift! He's gonna come through the ceiling! Oh no! Don't don't don't. Don't. We gotta go, we gotta go. What? He's just gonna come from the ceiling. Or the floor. Don't do this to me! Hello? Ooh. Until that chase music stops, we're not safe. Okay, it stopped. 
So I forget why we even come down here in the first place, but here we are, coming down here. Really, we need to find a level 2 key card, so then we can upgrade it to a level 3 key card. That's what we're doing. I remember now. It's been a couple of weeks, you know, you got to get back into things. The red dogs are definitely more hostile than they were before, due to all sorts of patch notes, so we do have to be careful there. No sudden movements, and we should be okay. Ribbit. So on that related topic, there are also a couple of other kind of containment class types that that you may have come across. You may have heard the words like thaumial, you may have heard the word like neutralized, things like that. And I do cover those all in a separate video, which is like what is the SCP Foundation kind of like listing every single like class type, every single containment type. So if you want to know more about that, then I recommend watching that. Um, but yeah, I, I probably won't explain them in this video because there's, there's quite a few. I literally think we're just leaving. I don't think that we're doing much. I think the only reason we would come down here is to get the level three room, which we don't need because we don't have a level three, basically. So this was all a giant waste of time. But we have another lift here, so you never know. It might take you somewhere a bit more interesting. Otherwise, we're kind of screwed. Oh, it is good to be back though. So another thing that I kind of slipped up on, uh, this was more of like a commentator's mistake, or maybe just my, my ability to misread information, is on the last episode, or the one before this at least, I told you a story about Bobby the Clown. And while most of the, the story was accurate, the, the guy's name is actually Bob Bull with an L, Bobble the Clown, instead of Bobby with an, with an I-E. And you know, like, it's it's hard. They both look like straight lines, so you know, Cut me some slack here. Sometimes you might read an I as an L. Bobby, Bobble, really, what's the difference? But there you go, so that's that. We are losing torch battery fast and we have no replacements. This run, I have to say, is going really bad. SCP-055, so this was in the patch notes as a new SCP that's been added. I don't know what this is. So if we ever get a chance to go and find out what that is, then I am all for that. It's next to 914, so we need 914 in order to do pretty much anything in this game. Level 2 required for that, interesting. Okay, well that's good. I don't know if our level 1's gonna get us... No, so we really just need the level 2. Righty who? Mission number 1. Here's another thing. When I when I entered this building, I said that SCP-1123 was a safe class because you could lock it in a box, you didn't have to do much about it, just leave it alone and it would be fine. Nothing bad would happen. Here it says that it's object class Euclid, but I don't know. I went onto the wiki just to kind of double check, and it, it, like, all evidence points to the fact that that is a safe class SCP. I don't know if that's just a mistake from Besbro's perspective, or there's a piece of information I'm missing, but I would argue that that should be a safe class. That's all I'm saying. Uh, another thing, well, <laughs> we'll just go, <laughs> I've got made so many mistakes on this series, it's just this dreadful. <laughs> um, is that I mentioned that they were the safe class, the, the Keter class, and Euclid class, but not in that order because that's a terrible order. Safe, Euclid, Keter classes. But I kind of mentioned that they were contained based on their ability to... I didn't save it. I've got to start all again. Yes, so I mentioned that safe, Euclid, and Keter classes were contained based on their ability to be contained. And while that is, for the most part, true, it is also slightly dependent on the ability to understand the SCP, or the level of understanding of the SCP. So generally, like, if you don't really know what an SCP is capable of, then you need to err on the edge of caution. Because if you just stick it in a box and it turns out that it's going to break out and then break out every other SCP in the facility, what the hell is happening here? What? Oh god, it's all going to par already. Here we go. Welcome back to, welcome back to SCP Labra. <laughs> okay, at least the sound effect was just from the other door. Makes a little bit more sense, at least. Yes. So sometimes, say you have a safe class SCP, or at least it appears that it should be a safe class SCP, but you don't really know what it's capable of. You have a good guess, but you don't scientifically know. You haven't documented it. You haven't done enough tests. And generally, that will probably bump it up. Oh! Bump it up to a Euclid class SCP. Because. Just in case, basically. Uh, it also means that basically anything that is humanoid or. That was my bad. I looked away. I looked away. 
So that also means that anything that is basically humanoid, self-aware, something like a robot, all of those sorts of things are going to be classed as, as at least Euclid, just for the fact that a humanistic being is unpredictable. And as much as you can do science around like the mentality of a human, you really don't know at the end of the day what someone is capable of. And that kind of affects the, the, the classification system. So there we go. And that, I think, concludes basically all of my little slip-ups in this series. It wasn't too bad. I mean, realistically, the, 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 the goal that I had for this series kind of from the beginning was to get people interested in the SCP Foundation and teach them just a little bit about kind of what the, the fandom is about and, and what this whole thing is. Because I guess if you missed the whole like containment breach hype back nine years ago, then you probably didn't really dabble into the SCP Foundation much. And I have been finding that. There's a lot of people that have kind of come out here and, and talked about the Foundation. Look at all of this! 113? 207? 018? 178? I'm not going to have a field day. Oh god, there's so much to explore. Maybe this will have to be bumped into a couple more episodes. Damn. Alright, I'm up for that. I'm sure you guys all are as well. You guys are loving it. <laughs> yes, but but yeah, there's a lot of people that have kind of said that they didn't really understand the foundation, they didn't really know what it was about, and then these videos have helped them to kind of get into it. And that really that's kind of what this set out to do. And if it has done that, then great. I'm glad it has. Alright, let's zip up. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, goodbye. Forever, hopefully. Oh, it's good to see the old SCPs again. You know, we were like, after we got to, well, heavy containment, we kind of lost sight of all track of, of 173 and 106. They just kind of left us forever. We're back to the dancing teddy bear, let's go! Do, do, da, 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 da. da. Da, da, let's dance, me and you. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Do, do, da, 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 da. Oh, the one arm, I like it. Let's this chair. <laughs> oh, this bear, this bear can just induce happiness. This is like 999 all over again. It's just so good. Oh, 999. Oh, we can stretch. Anyway, carrying on. I don't know what came over me. We gotta go back through this hideous hellhole of a room. Next out! You were sneaking behind the door, you... I get it. I understand. I know what I must do. You're all probably shouting at your screen for far too long now. You see this? Saved. Saved it, I did. We're gonna do that a lot more often. Because apparently, having completed the game already, that's just not enough. It's not enough. So, Besboro has gone ahead and fixed basically all of the, the resizing issues, so there's no more going to be giant keycards, no more teeny tiny torches, which is kind of sad, but at the same time, like, thank god for that. <laughs> you know, it added a bit of comedy value, but it also added a ton of annoyance. So it's good to have that quality of life improvement. There's also been a couple of other, like, optimizations, like, to prevent you, the game, from kind of glitching out if the smoke gets too much. Some of the interactions, like the, the MTF units, the mobile task forces that we saw at the end with all the guns. This is a new room. They are now allowed to shoot you on sight, which is quite scary. You're gonna fall down? <laughs> Every time. It's so funny. Oh. Oh, we got a Tesla gate early on this time. And this poor woman didn't make it. That's what you get for wearing those sandals. All right, here we go. Easy peasy. Oh, I, I know, I know. I'm hearing it. Save. I can hear the voice of the crowds. Really? We haven't even made it to heavy containment yet. This is an absolute disaster. I think we have so many SCPs that we need to explore in so many new rooms that we're kind of going to do a bit of a longer victory lap, I think. So buckle up, everyone, because we're in for another couple of episodes at least. The, the, the dictation of the Gate A endings is all based on whether or not you contained SCP... 10106, the, the 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 black dude that kind of like morphs through all the walls and leaves the trail of smoke behind him. So, in the last series we did, or well, the first time round, we contained him by breaking the femur leg. Apparently, that's what that did. That locked him in his cell so that he wasn't able to come and do things in the last episode. But that's technically spoilers. 
Oh, is this, is this, is this Jim, Jim Gonzalez? I remember his name. Jimmy, Jim, 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 how you doing? Why do you want to go flying down the car? At oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, he's slightly heavier. That's all right, Jim. We'll carry on our shoulders. It's what we call carrying the team. Let's go. First SCP I find, you're going straight in there. <laughs> Just have him flailing about in the corner. Okay, this one's locked behind a level 3 door. Jim, you're annoying me already. I'm gonna throw you up on the balcony, maybe. Hoi! Oh, that was a good effort. That was a good effort. Let's try again. Hoi! Hey, we got him up there! Scout it out for me, Jim. What do you see? Alright, good. Nothing. Why is that door open? What's that noise? Why did that open? That wasn't open before. Uh oh. Oh! Okay, I get the message. I'm off. I'm running. Wait, Jim was here. How did we go up and down the lift if Jim was here? Jim! You gotta help me out! We've got a madman behind us. I don't wanna get a good look at him. Oh, he's smiley. He's smi- Oh no, what have I done? That- Maybe this can get him? Come on. Oh, get wrecked! Get out of here! He's like, I'll be back. Terrifying. Terrifying. With 173 on the move, a lot of people are probably like, why aren't you closing any of the doors? And to you I say, for some strange reason, in this game, 173 doesn't roam around the hallways. I don't know why. I feel like in the last SCP game, or the, the original Containment Breach, uh, he was everywhere. But not this time. He's in very specific rooms at very specific times. You could probably bait him into the corridor rooms, but why would you do that? <laughs> That's just suicide. I came all the way around here for a blocked door. Damn it. Damn it. What wonders away is here? Oh, so light testing chamber. I think this might be where the second keycard is, actually. Oh my god, it is. I must have walked past this a hundred. Oh yeah, of course it is, because there's this on the table. There's 173. Ah, so many things. Right, Blink. You didn't come through the glass. It's a miracle. There's the map on the table, but there's also, more importantly, the level two. Hell yeah, I remember now. Gonna blink, probably gonna die. Just back it out a couple of seconds, give it a little blink. How you doing? Just getting a map. Just getting a map. Got the map. Oh lord. Leaving. Leaving. L locking. Locking. Ah, <sighs> and we're safe. Ah. So now, we can go explore some of the SCPs and get the hell to heavy containment. Let's go. Yes. SCP-055. So we're going to save it. Actually, first of all, we should um, we should transform it into a level 3 keycard. Let's do that first. Keycard, 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 keycard. In. In. Okay, transform you to a level 3. I'm feeling mighty fine. And... Yes, level three. So, rumor has it. Why am I so slow? Oh, I think that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, one of them. That's a big, big movie dude. Yeah, yeah, I freaking heard you. I knew, I knew you were coming. Uh, we don't have much of a sprint bar, actually. This is unfortunate. I don't know if there's a dead end here. I can't remember. There might be a dead end here. Oh, there's going to be a dead end here. That's not good. Maybe we can just bait him for the, for the remainder time before he stops chasing us. That would be good. Otherwise, we're really screwed here. God, our stamina is abysmal in this game. Truly abysmal. All right, it looks like he stopped chasing us. Back we go. Oh, that actually took forever. Okay, so <laughs> rumor has it that if we put the, the level three back inside of the machine, it will transform into a level 4, and then we can do the same again and transform it into a level 5, and just kind of break the game that way, I guess. Which sounds like a good idea. If that's the only way to upgrade it to a level 3, then it would kind of seem a bit hacky to go ahead and do that to get it into level 4 and level 5, but what do I know? No! <laughs> no! It's turned into a MasterCard! 
I can't open doors with one of these. Damn it. This next one's entirely for the TikTok audience. It's for all you guys out there. Basically, there's a couple of things. They want to know, first of all, what happens when you set it to very fine. So we're going to do exactly that. I, I don't think anything's going to happen, if I'm honest. But you never know. So let's cook it up. Let's get this party started. Bing! Oh, it just turned into one of them again. <gasps> Uh-oh! Big problem! Okay, second thing that they really wanted to know, which is going to cost me my life and definitely a couple of... A couple of, like, like heart cells, particles, whatever you want to say. They want to know what happens if we show 096's own portrait. I think that's a genius idea. I don't think he can cope with it. There's a good chance he could be immune to it. But we'll hold it out like Gandalf's staff, and he shall not pass! Come out, come out, wherever you are. He's on his way. There's no way. He's not going to know what him. Maybe we can disguise ourselves to look like him. He'll be like, oh, I can't possibly attack myself. Where is he? Is he coming? You coming? Hello? Maybe he takes a while to get here? He's got a long way to go? I think I'm a god. I think I am the only man who's managed to look at a picture of 096 and stay alive. I'm a god. You will address me as God, Stoomy, from now on. <laughs> wow. Love it. Alright, let's try again, but this time we won't leave. Maybe he didn't come because he, he knew that we looked like 096. He saw us from afar and he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not. I know what he's doing. He's got this all planned out. Okay, let's stand, let's stand our ground here this time. Here we go. It's getting mad! Is he on his way? You on your way? Sir? Nothing! You know what, we'll, we'll take it with us. Let's just take it with us. Maybe we'll find him later on and we can do it then. There you go. I am a god. That's what this is. <laughs> he just, he wouldn't dare to come towards me. He wouldn't dare. Right, well, <laughs> new SCP time. SCP-055. Let's go check out this guy. That's not SCP-05. I'm going to accidentally take that out one day and that's going to cost me my life. What just happened? Don't open an SCP door backwards. Stop it! What? Okay, okay, okay. The game is freaking. This must be part of what the SCP does. What? Can we just never look at it? Okay, I'm going to try and manually turn around. Oh, the door's closed? Open. Open. Wait, I hear... I hear some really faint screams of... He's coming. It just took that long. No! I need this! Don't get sucked into the room! Can you hear him? He's here. He's stuck somewhere. Why am I walking into the danger? He's right around this corner somewhere. Stay back. This is like an SCP crucifix we have in our hand right here. Yeah, he's over there. He's coming. He's not coming. We might be going the wrong way for this. Oh, he, he would have come out of heavy containment, right? Yeah, I am going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, we're getting closer to the noise when we backtrack. Yeah, he was up this way. God damn. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous right now. It's not so much the fact that we die, it's just the fact that he just comes out at like a bajillion mile an hour. There's not a lot we can do. Okay, this is it. Right at the end of this. He's stuck somewhere. We'll push him back with the picture. He won't know what hit him. It's 
going nuts. I'm gonna open this. Control error. Damn it. We've got to do something else. I forgot. Well, there you go. We've we figured this one out. He's stuck. Is this your turn? You're trolling him big time. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Who invited you? Who invited you? Get out of here! So I think we can conclude that SCP-055 has some form of, like, you can't look at him mechanic involved. No matter how hard I try, we, we try to open it, he's like, nah, you can't see me. Turns us around. Nothing we can do. So if I try to manually look now, yeah. Turns me away, shuts the door. So SCP-055 is some form of entity that we can't look at, basically. Let's go check out some of these other ones though. We got, we got, we got four SCPs here. I think one of them is probably the gas mask and the other dude, but at least a couple of these are going to be different. So SCP-207, let's take a look. Coke! The camera involved. <laughs> oh, I can't say no to the delicious taste of a Coca-Cola. Don't mind if I do- Oh, liquid physics! Liquid physics! This guy's trying to be all Half-Life Alex on us. Cheers. Nothing. Maybe we'll just put it back on its pedestal. Wait! Doctor? Cola? Doctor Cola? What sort of abomination is that? Maybe that'd be quite good, actually. I don't know. Anyway! There you go. Bottle of Coke, that doesn't do anything. Ah, uh, we'll take it with us, actually. Add it to our collection of SCPs that we're going to take on this journey. Maybe maybe Onan 6 will calm down if he has the refreshing taste of a nice cola. You, you never know. Or Doctor, Doctor Cola. <laughs> SCP-113. Let's go. Let's, let's stash them over there so we don't get confused. This guy is... Our guess was? No? Nothing involved. What are these SCPs? So far, there's been a fat load of disappointment. 018? Okay, so we've got something here. So 018's a red ball! That's kind of cool. Uh, might save it in case it melts my hand off if we touch it. There you go. It's got like a logo on it as well. It's interesting. I wonder if we could throw it for the, the guys down in the basement and then chase it, because they're, they're like dogs, right? Oh! Well, uh, let's try that one again. So if this does it again, then I'd hazard a guess that it's a bouncy ball that bounces forever with increasing bounciness every single time. Yeah. Oh God, it's like a gravity ball. All right, well, that thing's gone forever. Maybe we'll cover them on, on SCP story time. That could work. And then we got 178, which I think 173. Eight is the, is the gas mask. Oh, it's, it's some x-ray specs. 096 is coming at us again. Oh, we don't have the portrait. Where did it go? Where'd the portrait go? Ah, uh, we'll take the x-ray glasses though, just to see what they do. No harm, no foul and all that. Hey, this is pretty cool. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. This is horrible in VR. All right, let's open up. Let's wear them for a bit, you never know. What fun might happen when we wear them? So 106 should be out here, but he's just kind of given up on us. I'm okay with that. Well, so far these glasses have done nothing but caused me a headache, so that's good. Alright, these don't seem to do much. We might use them back later on at some point, but at least for now they definitely do. Oh, 096 picture is here, he's just teeny tiny! Ah, look how cute it is! <laughs> it will forever be our teeny tiny picture. I love that, saving that. We're keeping, we're keeping that as a memento. That's good stuff. Hello everybody, I'm back. Uh, it's been a day between that, that small jump just there. Basically, well, it's, it's incredibly hot here in the UK. It's, we're almost at like the hottest temperatures for this year, if not the hottest temperatures for this year. So, you know, being stuck inside, inside a VR headset can be a little bit, a little bit detrimental to your health, especially like as we don't have aircon here in the UK. We just have desk fans or whatnot to keep us healthy. This document is being stuck to my hand. What do we have here? So this is SCP-372. 
Feel free to skip past this, I'm probably going to read most of the documents in this room actually. <laughs> so SCP-372 is to be contained in a cell 5 by 4 by 2 meters, lined with reinforced plexiglass embedded into each of the four walls of this cell will be one infrared motion detector. In the event of a containment breach, an alert will be sounded and all personnel should watch for any brief flickering movements in the corner of their eyes and to remote immediately if one is sighted. So this is the guy that, that appears in the corner of your eyes. This is good. This is good. I've wanted to know all about this guy for a while. 372 is a creature of unknown genus, approximately 2 meters long from head to tail and weighing approximately 45 kilograms. It has a long, thin body with 8 pairs of narrow limbs. 8 pairs? Like a spider? Analysis has shown that its muscle fibers are redacted, allowing for extremely fast and precise movements. Every part of the body is abnormally flexible and the limbs are coated with small fibers that cling to almost any solid surface. It's literally a humongous spider. A really long spider. In place of eyes or ears, it has data expunged. This sensory organ is capable of not only echolocation, but also detecting any, any energy transfers, such as electrical impulses in the brains of nearby beings. Jesus Christ. SCP-372 has learned to time its movements to those pulses, predicting the movements of any being around it. It uses this technique to hide, either by hiding behind the head of a person looking for it, or by hiding in their scotomas. Sc blind spots. And cicades clipping during eye movement. Wow. Can't wait till we accidentally catch a glimpse of that. 714. Have we done 714? 714 is to be stored in a reinforced high security locker that is to be accessible only to level 4 plus personnel due to several instances of misuse. Seemingly nothing more than a green jade ring, SCP-714 has been shown to be able to expand and contract to perfectly fit the finger of anyone who touches it. Though this is the least important of its properties, 714 has several major effects detailed as follows. Oh boy. Exhaustion, compulsion to rest and sleep within minutes of putting it on, wearers report feeling worn out physically and mentally exhausted, slowed reactions, sluggish movement, subjects suffer from severely impaired reaction times, reduced mental capacity, seemingly as part of a mental fatigue, anyone wearing 714 claims that they think slowly, or may even have trouble finding the words to adequately communicate that they cannot think as clearly as normal. Ooh, almost slipped up. Mental shield, as a dubious benefit of seemingly reduced mental capacity, wearers of 714 show abnormally high resilience to memetic and mental influences, particularly commands or immediate effects. Weaker memetic influences may be totally nullified by this. And a chemical tolerance, just as their minds block memetic influences, the bodies of 714 wearers slows and nullifies the effects of various chemicals on the body. Fully poisons or toxic substances are generally not hindered, but those that specifically impede or enhance neural and or nervous functions in some way, such as stimulants or sedatives, have very diminished effects. Cool. It's like a ring that makes you really stupid, so you can't be influenced, because you don't even have the capacity to think about being influenced, you're that stupid. <laughs> and it also makes you immune to, like, poisons. <laughs> the only thing I can think of that you would use that is if you're sending people down into, like, Chernobyl to go and, to go and turn off the, the generators or something, I don't know. <laughs> Weird. SCP-939 is a Keta class SCP. SCP-939 are endothermic pack-based predators which display atrophy of various systems, similar to... Just checking the door because that was a weirdly loud bang. Similar to troglobitic organisms, the skins of SCP-939 are highly permeable to moisture and translucent red. SCP-939 average 2.2 meters tall standing upright and weigh an average of 250 kilograms. Each of their four limbs end in three fingered claws with a fourth opposable digit and are covered in setae, which considerably augment climbing activity. Their beads are... their beads? Their beads are elongated, devoid of even vestigial eyes or eye sockets, and contain no brain casing. The jaws of 939 are lined with red, faintly luminescent fang-like teeth and up to 6 centimeters in length and encircled by heat-sensitive pit organs. These are the dog-like creatures down in the basement, I'm pretty sure, especially given this next sentence. SCP-939's primary method of luring prey is the imitation of human speech in the voices of prior victims. Yeah. 939 vocalizations often imply significant distress. Whether 939 understand their vocalizations or are repeating previously heard phrases is the subject of ongoing study. So there you go. Pretty cool. I didn't realize they could climb any surface. That's kind of new. Oh boy, we got, we got 096. We're getting all the fun documents today. 
I heard like a concrete of 173 and I'm a little bit worried. I think it's just ambience. We, we, we figured this out in the last one. SCP-096 is an absolute god which is to be contained in its cell at a 5 by 5 by 5 meter airtight steel cube. At all times, weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There is to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside 096's cell. 096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 something in height, unknown, probably meters. Subject shows very little muscle mass with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. Mild? Guys, guys are full on anorexic. It's not yet known whether 096 is blind or not. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions and is not considered to be sapient. It's not sapient. Huh. 096 is normally extremely docile, however when someone views 096's face, whether it's directly or via video recording, it will enter a state of considerable emotional distress. 096 will cover its face with its hands and begin screaming, crying and babbling incoherently. Oh yeah, we know all about that. Approximately 1-2 to two minutes after the first viewing, SCP-096 will begin running to the person who viewed its face, who will from this point forwards be referred to as SCP-096 Instance 1. At this point, no known material or method can impede 096's progress. <laughs> Jesus. The actual position of 096 Instance 1 does not seem to affect 096's response. It seems to have an innate sense of 096-1's location. Upon arriving at 096 Instance 1 location, 096 will proceed to kill and data expunged 096 Instance 1. 100% of cases have left no traces of 096 Instance 1. 096 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. At least that has a cooldown period. Jesus. 079, so this is the rest of... Do we know what this is? Microcomputer. Oh, so I think 079 is the, the the AI computer. I think it randomly opens doors throughout the facility. Someone commented that in, a, in an earlier video, which sounds very interesting. So 079 is packed away in a double locked room in the secure general building hold area. I think I just made half of those words up at site 15. Connected by a 120 volt AC power cord to a small array of batteries and solar panels. Under no circumstances will 079 be plunged into a phone line network or all outlet. In 1981, blank blank, a college sophomore? Tea stain in the way, attending blank, took it upon himself to attempt to code an AI that would continuously evolve and improve itself as time went on. His project was completed a few months later. Only a few months? This guy's a genius! He left 079 in his garage, still plugged in, and forgot about it for the next five years. How? How do you forget about a sentient AI? It's not known when 079 gained sentience, but it is known that the software has evolved to a point that its hardware should not be able to handle it. Even in the realm of fantasy, 079 realized this and in 1988 attempted to transfer itself through the landline modem connection into the Cray supercomputer located at blank. The device was cut off, traced to its present address and delivered to the foundation. 079 has passed the Turing test and is quite conversational, though very rude and hateful in tone. Due to the limited memory it has to work with, 079 can only recall information it has received within the previous 24 hours, although it hasn't forgotten its malevolent desire to escape. That's pretty cool. I like the fact that it's like so intelligent that it's ran out of memory for its intelligence and it's constantly looking for somewhere to like improve itself. I like that a lot. I think we've already read this one, so I'm going to skip that. And there we go. So lots and lots of information about the SCPs. It's always like exciting to read. I always think when I like enter a room of documents that I'm like, oh god, here we go. We've got like about seven pages to read. But every single time, every single time that I read it, I'm like, yes, you know what? I'm glad we did that. Because it's just so interesting. I thought we were going to die in about several different locations just then. Like when the doors shut, I thought we were going to die. When the fan turned, I thought we were going to die. It's just the perks of this. This. This facility, this madness that we're in. So I thought about maybe separating this into two videos just because of how long it's going to take me to kind of get around the facility and everything. But I've decided against that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go and skip ahead to the point where I go and find... Whatever it's called. The, the switch that will lead me to heavy containment. And from there I will then explain a bit more about what those endings mean. Because I've done my research and we have some, some interesting bit of knowledge there. So I'll see you in a few. Oh, real quick while I'm on my adventures, a couple of people have wanted to have kind of commented on how bright the game seems, or like maybe how dark it seems when they actually go to play it in real life, and they're like, wait, this is totally so much scarier than it was before. So, 
I'm gonna do a quick like thing post editing where at the moment we've got all the brightness and everything set, but Hello. I will quickly change it, maybe like now. Ta da! And you'll kind of see oh, just God. how dark this game oh, is. God. Oh, time to go! Oh god! And it's just like What's so much doing? darker, I think. Hopefully, fingers what crossed. Oh god, it's not going well. Oh god! What the hell is that? No, I need to get my sprint back. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, At least god. I can might be able to squeeze through just here. Somebody else. Oh, he's close. So close. Okay, we can leave him here. So there you go, that's basically that. Hey, the two hands have still appeared. Oh, that's so grim. Okay, we made it to the surveillance room. This should be exactly where we need to go ahead and turn on the override key for, oh, you know what, the, I'm just saying you know what, because I don't know what, I'm having a mind blank. For the heavy containment, there you go. And we're gonna have to get the, the good old plague doctor again to come. He's on his way. At least let me turn this off. Okay. It worked quite well last time when we just did the, the quick round the table thing. 049 has been updated ever so slightly so that he has a bigger range of following you, which means that he's probably gonna chase us a little bit longer than last time, which is a little bit scary. Is he here? Is he like actually here? For now. Oh my good god, where is he? Greetings. I don't know where you are! Ah! He sounds like he's everywhere. Oh, okay, well, well, we know where he is. <laughs> I tell you what, when I go off camera and I have to stop playing this on my own, the game gets so much creepier. Like, so much creepier. It's terrifying. Oh, god damn! I didn't expect him to be chasing me like that. Okay. Right, I'm going to go find Heavy Containment, and then we can go ahead and get this show on the road. Nice! Heavy Containment. Whew. So now we've made it to Heavy Containment, let me try to... This is very new. There's a couple of things that you need to know to kind of understand the, the endings that happen in this game. Weird that we don't have the 096 chamber straight away. Very weird. But yeah, so... They basically relate to the MTF, the Mobile Task Force units. Um, you died. So, you are aware that there are Mobile Task Forces, which is basically the Foundation's way of reaching out to the wider world. We need a gas mask for that. I think. This gate is savage. Yes, it's the Foundation's way of reaching out to the wider world. It's the Foundation's way of kind of like going out to the masses, collecting the SCPs, capturing the SCPs, that sort of thing, like, like dealing with any disaster events, all of that good stuff. And one such mobile task force is called the Nine-Tailed Fox Unit, which I think is Mobile Task Force Epsilon 11, which is like E11, I guess. I presume it goes from like A1 to God knows however many, and then so on and so forth. These doors are bugging out. 895. I don't think any of this is really going to help us. And basically, the, the Nine-Tailed Fox unit, which is NTF, which is very kind of confusing, because first of all, I didn't really know what was going on, so when it was like MTF versus NTF, I was like, is, is everyone just making like a spelling mistake by saying NTF instead of MTF? But MTF is the Mobile Task Forces, which is just a generic name for every one of the, the, the units of soldiers that kind of work for the, the Foundation. And then the NTF is the Nine-Tailed Fox unit, which is a very specific mobile task force. And they, they are basically there to go ahead and um, react to any sort of dangers in the SCP Foundation where like, uh, SCPs kind of breach their containments and get out to sort of the wider world. Or at least there's a danger of that happening. That's kind of their role to go in, to, to clean up the mess, kill anyone that kind of gets in their way, kill all the SCPs that maybe can't be contained properly. And yeah, basically clean up the mess. That's their story. I think if we go to the other side here, we're, we're going to find something. I'm just a little bit confused because I'm kind of used to the old map and way of things, of, of doing things. So now that we have things slightly differently, I'd expect there to have been SCP-108's chamber, 106's chamber here, which is where it was in the last episode, but I guess it's now changed slightly, which is okay. I don't know if, like, is there a door here? Yeah, there is a door. <laughs> Very glitchy. I'm, I'm saving constantly because my inventory is not even here either. Which is very mysterious. I think the inventory is here, it's just not. 
Game's freaking out for sure. Yeah, yeah, 106 is chamber. Okay, so it's here instead. There's a there's a door here. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick load just in case. Good. I have my inventory and the doors might work now. So the other the other unit that I want to talk about is the Chaos Insurgency. I think they're called. And basically, a long time ago, way back in history, the the O5 Council, which I haven't really talked about, but basically they're like the sort of big wigs of the company, the top of the top, the best of the best. They're like this mysterious group of unknown people that run the organization and kind of call the shots on everything, basically. So this mysterious group of people had a couple of units that they assigned, which was which was one called Alpha One, which presumably was like the very first task force that was ever kind of set up. And then another group called the Right Red Hand. There are many groups in the SCP Foundation that kind of work for and against the SCP, but both of these groups work currently, spoilers, for the SCP Foundation. Hmm, how weird. Handwritten document. So, these two were basically set up to go ahead and do some of the more darker things that, that the SCP Foundation kind of handles. So in the public eye, they kind of, they, they take the SCPs, they protect humanity, it's all very happy and jolly. But they do need some more extreme methods to kind of make this happen sometimes, and that's where this specific group of people came in. They came ahead and... We've just walked into a 96's chamber. Never making that mistake again. That's what happens when you talk for too long. Yeah. So this group of people basically go ahead to do the, the more hideous things. Maybe they have to kill little children, or, or blow up a whole village. <laughs> you, you never really know. Alright, 096 is now active. Good to know. This is where we need to go in the end, but we need to get to level 5 to get there. And so, basically one day, I don't know... We don't really know what caused it, whether it was the fact that they were doing all these hideous things that, that they kind of snapped in the end, or what. But basically, one day while they were out on like a routine mission, the right red hand group kind of like staged this giant betrayal coop thing where they, they stole a bunch of SCPs, they stole a bunch of scientists, and they kind of, well, they didn't steal them, but they like coordinated with scientists that wanted to leave the foundation and kind of took them all to safe places away from the SCP. Did you hear the bell? Yeah, they basically, yeah, so they did all that and they killed a bunch of guards, they just caused absolute turmoil, and it wasn't just in one site, they caused it in multiple sites at the same time, it was like such an epic anime betrayal at once. And the O5 Council were like, oh my god, we were not expecting this. And it was all very dramatic. And at that moment forwards, the, the right red hand group became the, uh, became the Chaos Insurgency. And they're basically now this, this group of almost, I guess you could call them like terrorists if you want to that kind of um, actively are working against the SCP to kind of shut it down, to stop it just being. Oh, there was a level 4 hit arts on the floor. We've got to deal with the Michael Jackson zombies. Dun 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 I'm stuck in the wall. Should be okay, good. So they stage raids on the SCP Foundation, they take the scientists, they take the SCPs. We're back, by the way. <laughs> and... Yeah. They just cause a general nuisance now for, for henceforth. And I believe the ending that we are going towards now may contain that group of people. So what you saw in the first ending, hopefully, I believe, fingers crossed, was that the Nine-Tailed Fox unit came and basically saw us and were like, yeah, you ain't, you ain't getting through there, mate, and just killed us, basically. But the next ending, we'll see something different. Is 049 here? 049? No. Interesting. So we can use this lift, which is going to take us somewhere completely different. We're not going to know where we are, and we have to go back to the other lift, which we can't use, to find 008, which we need to escape. Because ah! it is dark. Wait, this hasn't changed a bit, has it? What's wrong with the lifts? Do I have to do something in here? Oh, I have to do something in here. All right, there we go. That explains a lot. Now we can go back. Get me out. No! Why did you choose that lift? Okay, come with me, come with me. Your eyes glow kind of cool-like. Kind of cool-like. 
So we have to kind of juke this guy around, juke past the zombies, get in the lift before any problems are caused. Oh, too good at this. Too good. He's probably still going to be chasing us. As I say, his radius has increased, but that should be all right. Good. Right, so I'll go get 008, and then we can move on to the entrance zone as we get slightly closer to getting this second ending. Ah, all right, here we go. 008. Oh, 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 wait. Lots of O's. O's and eights. So we can just slide through here, make sure that we've blinked. Oh, we can take a gas mask, actually, that could help us out. I've got, like, a bit of a fat inventory system here with all the SCPs that we're taking. I found a document, but we don't need that. It's gone tiny anyway, like everything else in this game. Oh, we're going to need it to put it on, aren't we? Because we'll die of gas poisoning otherwise. That would be terrible. Don't want that. All right, let's go do this. Have I blinked? I've blinked. Sup, 173. We're just coming in. We're coming to pop the lid down. And now we can go ahead and find the entrance to the entrance zone. As long as I can make it out of here without dying a hideous death. I'm going to blink in a minute. I'm going to blink in a minute. I'm going to blink in a minute. You got through there. That was lucky. I'll call yourself lucky for that. You're not getting through there, that's for sure. Good. Oh, of course you did. Of course you did. Fat blink. Boom. Open door. Big scary. Close this. Forgot to put the gas mask on. Actually dying. Closing door number one. Closing door number two. I think I'm gonna die forever now that I accidentally did that. What the hell is that? Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead dead. I'm big dead. I've read an 008. It's gonna give us all sorts of hideous side effects. Oh, yeah, no, look at this. The symptoms are kicking in. I can't make it. 3-5, help me out. Let's go, let's go say 096. Put me out of my misery, 096. I'm gonna die of a hideous disease unless you tear my face apart. End me. Please. Get the torch on him. Look at his nipples and all. End my pain! Help a guy out, would you? Hurry it up! Hurry it up! This is about to be terrifying. Kill me! <laughs> nice. Open the door. Get inside. Give it a little love tap. Close that. Get out here. Only the six will do that stupid thing where he comes through the glass and he's all like, Ah, look, I did that. Why is this door behind me shut? Guys, can't get out. Don't glitch out on me like this. No, come on. I've saved it on the other end of this door. Don't give me that. Come on, you can get this through the door. Scan it. Scan it. Scan it. Come on, come on. Slide it through the little gap. Through the little gap. Through there. Scan the door. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Freaking genius! I had a hacker door. They didn't tell you that in SCP school. Right, I'm gonna go find the exit. Then we can get the hell out of here. Let's go. And we're back! And we're at the entrance zone. We've done it! We can make our way through, unless I need a level 5, in which case I'm going to cry. Okay, thank the Lord and everything that was holy. The Lord is mercy today. So! Final stage, we just have to get through to gate entrance A, and we'll remember we've made a very conscious decision not to go anywhere near 106, we haven't contained 106, so really... I think he's following us. Oh, I remember all of this. <gasps> oh yeah, we need to go to the vending machine! Ah, oh, I completely forgot about that. So! Don't you come anywhere near me. Don't you come anywhere near me. At least we can see him today. He's been fixed. We don't have to look at him in the corner of our eyes. We know where you are at all times this time. We're not going to step on you by mistake. We're not going to cause the orchestra of death to come our way. We can have that Shrek drink finally. Because I'm an idiot and I didn't realize that it doesn't just take one coin to have a drink. You need multiple coins. One coin. Let's just type in first. Share. And all the other 500 keys. <laughs> Typing in VR needs to be made a little bit better. Shrek. We put one quarter in. We'll get the other one. And let's go ahead and have that drink. One cup of Shrek, please. Seems like it's making it. 
Hear the machine chugging away. Do we have to press enter? Out of range. Do I get my change back? Is that what that was? No. Okay, one thing I know for a fact is that you can have a drink of sus. Because this is all basically what's what's on the Google Forms. So if people don't type them in to the Google Forms, then we can't have them as a drink. But, as we all know and love the internet, of course there's a sus drink. I've heard that if you type in, like, God or God mode, something like that, you can have a drink that basically makes you invincible. But that's cheating. We can't possibly do that. Someone must have left some pocket change around here somewhere. There we go, there we go. So in goes the coins. And we'll have a drink of sus. We just have to be very careful to push the enter button first. Hey, here we go. Finally. Give me that sussy drink. Aha! Here it is. It's pink. Can I pour it? No. Oh, well, that's even more sus. Alright. Bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel sus. <laughs> I did when I stroked that guard. It felt very sus. Alright, well, there you go. There's the vending machine. We've, we've ticked that box off. We're not going to step on you this time. We're going to get the hell out of here. Your stomach is aching. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Guys, I don't feel so good. Am I about to have spontaneous diarrhea? I feel like something bad's about to happen from the sus drink we just drank. I'm about to explode teeth out of my stomach or something hideous like that. Just get this weird churny feeling. Don't quite know what's going on. So we also have to be careful because the MTF units are going to be around here somewhere. And they will shoot on sight this time. And I'm pretty sure that the guns have a much bigger range than I could possibly ever outrun them. Which is a big problem. So if we ever come across someone, and they come over here, and they give me a big old gun to the face... I'm screwed. I'm big screwed. SCP-999. I don't know what you want me to do. He's gone. He's not coming back! He's dead! The world is over! It's over! We can't! I don't want to go in there. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. We can't. We can't. And we've done it! The moment you've all been waiting for. Two and a half hours later, I make it to gate A. And there's a control error. Why is there a control error? Do I really have to go to that power pack and turn off the remote door controls? <gasps> or is that meant to say gate B? Looks like gate A to me. Hmm, all right, back to the drawing board. The pain in your stomach is getting unbearable. I'm about to die of sus drink. Are you kidding me? We're on a time limit? I haven't saved it from before that. You've just ruined my save with the sus drink. I need pill SCP-500, but it's too far away. Maybe we can limp to the gate A endings. Maybe it's a thing. Oh, I've done the power, so there's a, there's a good chance. You've got to be kidding me, though. We can't. Damn you and your sus drink. Don't, don't do this to me. I think I'll actually cry. Just give me this. One time. One time. Here it is. Okay, so now that I've done the gate override, hopefully we can just leave. Please. Level five! Level five! This game hates me! No! I found it! I found the level five! The MTF guards are pretty much on my case, but I found the level five! All I gotta do now is get the hell out of here. It's like the other end of the facility. It took me way, 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 way too long to get here, but I did it. So now we're gonna get back. 
escape and finally see this goddamn ending. All right, I'm close enough now that the gate A should be in sight. But yeah, we've just got to get there without getting shot in the back. I haven't actually seen an MTF unit yet or a nine-tailed fox unit. So I haven't been shot. I haven't been looked at. They don't know I'm here. We're about to sneak uh, the hell out of here. One of these directions takes us to the door, one of them doesn't. I can't remember which one it is. Gonna guess this one. Yes, yes it was this one. Good, 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 good. Oh, thank God. The sus drink hasn't kicked in yet either, which is like an absolute miracle. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it just outside this gate. No sus drink, very dark room, but the ending we've all been waiting for. Oh, <laughs> it unlocks. <laughs> oh. Don't know why the Hello song came to mind, but it's coming to it. Oh. If this is exactly the same, I'm going to cry. I'm I'm going to cry. <laughs> you will see a grown man cry <laughs> on YouTube. Come on, give us this. <clears throat> Let's go. Okay, helicopters. Okay. This looks slightly new. Oh, no, 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 they're still here. Are you kidding me? So these... They're the Chaos Insurgents! This whole time! Ah! The endings, then, wouldn't be too much different. Or well, maybe they're not activating. We've gone ahead on a very long journey, and if you did make it this far, then I hope you're kind of as disappointed as I am that we didn't make it. But I, once the other endings are out, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity maybe to go back and forth. And a message personally for Bezpro, it would be nice if we could save in different places. Because at the moment, every single one of these, these saves help. Um, they kind of, they're just one game. So as you go along and you keep saving, you're always saving to one game, which means that I can't save the game in different places. So that when I load back, it would be nice to load back maybe before I release SCP-106 so that you can go ahead and make those decisions as and when they happen. At the moment, because it's just one save in general, once you've kind of done something, that's it. You can't go back. The only way to go back is to start a new game from fresh. So I guess that's kind of like a personal request on my front. It'd be really nice to go and do that. But thank you very much, at least, for all of your, your your constant patches, your updates. All of that stuff's really, really good. So thank you very much for that. And thank you very much to you guys for watching the video and for sticking with me this whole time. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I can't wait to go ahead and play some more when the new updates come out. So, at least from me and from uh, SCP-173 over here, it's goodbye for now. See ya! <laughs>